Hi everybody, it's Miss Mariah from the Allen County Public Library coming to you from the library. <laughs> We're actually open, so if you hear any voices in the background, it's patrons coming in to get their items and, and visit for a few minutes. We haven't been able to do that often at all in the past five months, so we are here. And it is the Adult Story Hour. It's a story hour that the Allen County Public Library holds for adults with special needs. We first started this because we knew that there was a need for this in the community. I choose a book, usually from a topic that somebody picked out the month before and said, hey, you know, I'm interested in alligators, flamingos, dragons, and I will get a book and we'll read it and talk about it. And we would often do a craft and then we would have food at the end. Well, considering, um, you know, things that have been going on, our story hour is <laughs> pretty much down to 10, 15 minutes because the adult story hour, one of the main focuses is, is community, communication, friendships, talking to each other about who's got a new job or who's doing what at their job or who's traveling and, and who's picked up a new sport, um, just things like that. So right now you just have me <laughs> sitting here in the corner of the library. So what I did was I picked a topic and I thought about the month of September, which will be here before we know it. In fact, next week. So, September is Honey Month. I picked a book about bees. Now, I'm not gonna read this entire book because it's nonfiction. There's a lot of words and a lot of stuff that, you know, we may not really be interested in. So, I'm going to pick out sections. I have picked out sections going over honey, how honey's made, what bees are doing in the beehive, and it is written by Charlotte Milner. And the publisher is, get it over here to the publisher page. Oh my goodness. DK Books, okay? So it's just called The Bee Book. And like I said, we're not gonna read the whole thing. You see my little tabs up here. This, these are pages that I have picked information that I think that we will enjoy. Okay, so you guys ready? And I'm just gonna let you know, I love me some bees. I'm allergic to bees. If I get stung by a bee, I'm at the hospital. But bees are so important. They, they help pollinate our crops. Without bees, we would have no food. So remember that, if you just see a bee hanging out, it's not bothering anybody, it's hanging out on the porch railing, don't kill him, leave him alone because he doesn't want to sting you, because once he stings you, that will lead to his death. They don't want to sting you, but if you swat at them and get them angry and they feel like you're trying to kill them, well, they're going to protect themselves. So remember, leave the bees alone. <laughs> okay, first one, uh, page. What is a honeybee? Like all bees, a honeybee is an insect. All insects have six legs and generally have one or two pair of wings. Honeybees live together in large groups called colonies. Every colony contains a queen bee and worker bees. The colony lives in a nest. Some nests are wild and others are kept by humans in beehives. So I think we all pretty much know that already. Um, in the beehive, you'll find beeswax. Beeswax is used by honeybees to make hexagon cells, which together make a honeycomb. Be uh, honeybees fill the cone cells with honey, pollen, and eggs. Honey is made from collected nectar. Honeybees store the honey in the combs and eat it when there's no available flowers. See, so we've, we've all seen these little buildings, these little honeybee houses, the beehives, right? So the hexagon that make up the honeycomb, and which I, if you haven't seen a honeycomb, Google it, 
It's very, very interesting. It's very waxy. People sometimes will chew on it. Uh, when it is warm, during the spring and summer, there are lots of flowers around. Honeybees are busy collecting nectar and pollen to feed the growing colony. Honeybees use the nectar to make honey in the nest, which will feed them through the late fall and winter. When it is cold, honeybees can't fly in the cold. So in late fall and winter, they will stay in their nest and eat the honey that is stored over the warmer months. They keep warm by huddling into a tight ball, but the queen taking the warmest spot in the center. So all the bees are like just this little vibrating ball. They're just kind of, you know, they can't fly, but they're staying warm. And right in the center of that ball is your queen bee. Isn't that neat? That's just the page, just talking about each side. Very interesting. Is where does honey come from? Some honeybees live and make honey in the wild. Others are domesticated, like your cats and your dogs that live with you. They're kept and make honey that is collected by humans. These honeybees are kept in beehives and are cared for by beekeepers. It is a special relationship between honeybees and the beekeepers that allow us to find honey in stores and on our breakfast tables. Beekeepers keep their honey in beehives. These homes protect the honeybees from the cold and the rain, as well as keeping them cool in the summer. Inside the hives, the honeybees, I see, inside the hives, honeybees build honeycombs. We've already talked about the, the hexagon shaped waxy things and fill them with honey that can be collected by the beekeeper and put into jars. Humans have been collecting honey for 13,000 years. It is, that's a very long time. Jars of honey were even found in Egyptian tombs. The Pharaoh, King Tut, you know him? You remember that name? Loved honey so much that he was buried with it. So let's see. Because they know the honeybee, now that we're talking about the beekeepers here, knowing about how honeybees behave and what they get up to inside the hive is important to keeping a healthy colony. Having this understanding allows a beekeeper to stay calm and check the hive and collect the honey. A calm beekeeper means that the bees will be calm too. So a lot of times people will get stung by bees because they're just hyper and they're like, oh my gosh, there's a bee. Calm down. If you're calm, that bee is gonna sense that you're calm and you're not gonna be a problem to him. It's not gonna sting you, okay? Uh, they also wear the bee suit, which is gloves, a hood, and a veil. Every part of the beekeeper needs to be covered so that they can't get stung because occasionally they still do get stung. A smoker pumps out smoke around the nest and calms the honeybees. The smell of the smoke makes the bees think that there's a risk of fire. So they start to eat honey in case they need to abandon the hive. Stinging is the last thing these honeybees want to do. It's a very interesting book. You should check it out the next time that you come into the library. Uh, here's what's happening in the hive. The queen, the female, okay? She's she's the head honcho. There's only one queen per hive. Her lifespan can be up to five years. Her job as the mother of most of the bees in the hive, the queen must lay eggs. She can lay 2,000 eggs every day. Ugh, no, I love my kids, but no. <laughs> The worker, who is also female, how many lives in the beehive? Thousands. Her lifespan is usually 40 days because she's working. Her job, the worker bee has the most jobs to do, including cleaning and guarding the hive and going out and, and collecting nectar and making honey. The drone, which is the male bee, 
there are hundreds during the summer. Their lifespan's only a few weeks. That doesn't sound good, does it? The drone bee doesn't have much work to do, but is needed in the summer to mate with the queen from another colony. And in the fall, the drones are pushed out of the hives. Well, that makes me kind of sad for the drones. So remember, don't kill a bee. He's probably gonna live a couple of weeks anyway. And, and when it gets cold, he's gonna be kicked out of the hive. Be nice to bees. <laughs> I didn't know that. That was very interesting. Okay, so how can we help the bees? Okay, for starters, don't kill them. Leave them alone. They're not gonna bother you. They're busy collecting nectar and, and pollen and doing their thing and, and mating with the queen, knowing they're gonna be out in the cold come fall. Leave them alone. They're not gonna bother you. Don't bother them. Also, you can plant certain flowers to attract bees to your yard so that they will be healthy and they can go and pollinate and help our food crops grow. Let's see, what plants for spring? Uh, the sundrop and the iris. We've, we've got those around here. Uh, for summertime, we've got lavender, mint, and cornflower. We've got those around here. And for the fall, sunflowers and ivy. So that's just some flowers that we can grow in our own gardens to help the bee population stay healthy in our area. All right. So I hope you enjoyed those few facts about bees. And I'm gonna stop this part of the video, come in, and we're gonna do a little quick craft. I've got bags out front. So if you wanna do this, or you know somebody in your family that would like to do this who likes bees, come in and it's, it's all the parts you need and I'll show you how to put them together here in just a moment. I'll be right back. Thank you. All right, we're back. Here is the paper that you will get with your craft and it's all the parts of your bee, which will be in the bag. All you need is scissors and glue. And this is the little guy that we're gonna be making. So I started off, I cut out this little weird bee body shape, okay? Got my glue. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to glue on his antennas. So you, I, you see all these little, right here's his legs. Right here's his antennas. So the reason I've got the uh, scissors is so that I can trim these down and make them the way that I wanna make them, okay? So we're gonna put just a little glue on his head there. I'm gonna put some antennas on, okay? You can decide whether or not you want a worker bee, a drone bee, a queen bee. I guess if you want a queen bee, you can put a big crown on her. <laughs> All right, so then I've got these little yellow pieces and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna glue these onto the body. Oop, now you see what I did? I did that wrong. Cause this is gonna be the underneath. So the yellow needs to be on this side. See, I almost messed up, didn't I? And y'all thought Miss Mariah was perfect, right? <laughs> well, I think all of you guys are right near perfect. And I can't wait till we all can come back together and hang out again, have pizza and Cokes again, and, and talk about our lives. Okay, so I just put my three little, you know, and I didn't even really do it straight or perfect. And then I'm just trimming off the edges, just right around like that. His antenna's getting in the way, isn't he? Okay, just like that. <laughs> All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and put his little stinger on. See, just, just a little, there's a tiny, tiny uh, triangle in your bag, so make sure you look for it when you start pouring all your stuff out. And I'm just gonna glue, that one doesn't have a stinger, but I thought ours would be cute with a little stinger on them. How about that? Now let's scoot that stuff out of the way. 
So now let's go ahead and glue his legs on. Flip him back over. So we got, and like I said, you can cut these down to whatever size you want, okay? So we've got a leg in the back. So two little legs coming out in the back. And then we got another one coming out up here. Ah! Put some more glue on there. Now, some of y'all, this is going to get a little sticky on your fingers. So, you know, make sure to have your baby wipes nearby. Because I know some of you guys don't mind it, but some of you don't. You just don't care for it at all. Okay. So, there is our four of our six legs. A lot of glue. And I'm just going to put the other legs right, right above those hind legs I just put a minute ago. I'm actually going to use the glue to help me pick it up. So see, it's kind of a hot mess back there, but when you flip him around, you see all his little legs. Okay, so what I'm going to do to help cover up some of this glue and this mess that we have, I'm going to take our longer wings and you you have two sets of wings in your bag and we'll put these longer wings out like this okay put a little more glue and I'm making a big old mess that's okay all right so I got it all smushed down. I'm just pushing my glue around. So there, there's our bee with his first set of wings. And then we're gonna take these smaller wings and I'm gonna fold it right at the tip. Yeah. So that it rises up a little bit. Okay, just like that. I'm gonna do the same thing here. Put a little more glue because it didn't want to didn't want to stay. All right. So now we have our very own honeybee. Let me see if I can, I'm going to hold him by his antenna. I promise I'm not hurting him. He's got his little stinger. And now we've got our little bee. Push his wings out a little bit. See? All right. So, if you want one of these craft bags, just come right up to the library. Woo. We'll have them sitting in the um, foyer. And there's this picture on it. So, you'll know you're getting the right thing. And thank you again for joining me. This is Miss Mariah, and I can't wait to see you guys next month. Bye.